Okay, something I want to talk about. Isolated, separate from any other video. Let's have a look at Spirit's body, okay? Nice pot belly, nice rump, good musculation. She's not very fit because she hasn't worked out. She's been a broodmare for six years. You know, we got a shoulder blade there. We got a good point to shoulder. You know, she's got a great weight. She doesn't have all this hard fat up on her neck. You know, like you can see her body. She has a good weight score. You know, a good weight score. You go, you know, the wobble on the neck, the point of the shoulder. Is, you know, is the shoulder gone? Can you find it? You know, and you come around and you look at the end of the floating ribs for that hollow that kind of should be there beneath the hip to the end of the rib cage. If your pony doesn't have one, he's fat. You come around to the back of the bum. And I can't quite get in there because well, I don't want to climb through the fence right now. But uh, if you have like an apple effect on the top, you know, you get these two big dimples and you expect to see an apple, you know, stem stick out. That's called an apple bum. And that's what fat animals have. Spirit has the impression of looking fat sometimes because she's, you know, a broodmare and she's a Newfoundland pony. She's got a big belly. Very round. But she's certainly not overweight and she's certainly not underweight. In fact, she's looking a lot better. We've had her now, ooh, October, November, December, January, February, a year and five months. And she looks fabulous. Her mane has grown like, geez, almost a foot. And she came to us pregnant with Fisher. Let's have a look at his weight score while she's scratching her head. Now that patch on his side there, that's where he lies down. He gets wet. So he's got a good mane coming in. He's going to come and look at me, though, because he's a baby and he's interested in everything. So I'm going to dicky around here and see if I can't get a look at his body. No, I can't. He thinks this is a game. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's too bad we can't see the other side because his lie-down patch is there. Anyway, he's growing. Every time we put weight on him, he just grows. So he's a little challenging. We're trying to make sure he has, like, a good percentage poundage weight of feeds to his body weight so that he's growing properly and doesn't have a second ear spurt. We want him to reach his full potential. Now these ponies have been living outside since June 2011. It is February 2012, so come on Newfoundland. Put more animals outside. We have tree shelter here, a lot of it. They have a river to drink from. We provide them with warmed water though. And they have what I call the back bedroom back here that they go into as well depending on the wind direction. We'll build them a run-in shed when we open up the corridor and make the back pasture next year. So since I broke my arm and uh, thus my income vanished, we went with the shelter logic. Thank God that I have a great pony partner in Doug who has a great partner in Phil to help us build and design the interior part of the shelter. Anyway, I'm so proud of the shelter and the boys' work that I keep going back to look at it. But this video is really about, look at this. These animals are healthy. Their hoof mechanism has been working all, all along. They're walking, moving around is what that means. The frog actually has a bit of a blood pump into it. Oh, he took my lead line. Anyway, so it's important for blood return from the hoof for them to move around. That's why horses get stocked up when they're burned too long, okay? Can't move around. We have a hay feeder. Spirit still tunnels her nose into it, so she's probably still breathing a little bit of dust. But we'll come to a perfection. We let them waste hay on the ground. They're eating round bale hay. That's 12 to 16 percent average between one end of the pasture to the other. Um, and they're getting alfalfa, timothy, hay cube soak. Sometimes we add oils, sometimes not, sometimes oats. Spirit stays on the oats. Fisher doesn't need as many of them as she does, or he becomes psycho. <laughs> so. We, uh, we moderate his oats, but we look at other oils when he needs denser nutrition or omegas or something like that to keep a weight management. They're eating all the time. You know, it's not very much time that they don't eat <coughs> or have access to food. So it tries to emulate the graze and wander. However, it would be nice if they could wander over here to a feed bin and wander over here to a feed bin with water and stuff. So we'll develop that as time goes. So the point here is that, yes, you can maintain outside animals. Newfoundland ponies are native to this climate, right? They, you know, they have the evolutionary physiological background from the moorland ponies of Europe to do this. They have a great winter coat. And you'll notice, actually, that Fisher has a greater coat than Spirit does. Look at this. This is really thick. There's two kinds of hair here. We have an undercoat, you know, and then we have a 
longer hair coat. So we have a slicker and a fleece liner kind of thing. And we have a drop tail that protects this area where there's no hair with fringes. These ponies don't have snow shoots, but they do have fringes. So that protects them there. Now the wide belly, the water slides off the side and doesn't get up and underneath where the udder and the bare skin is. We check their extremities, their legs, their ears, their mouths, and they've never been cold, which is kind of a learning experience for me because I was a little trepidated being an equestrian trained barn girl who liked the horse show and stuff when I was a kid. Now I'm into how did Newfoundland do this and damn, isn't it beautiful? Look at that mare. She's so Exmoor. She's gorgeous. Anyway, I could go on and on about other feed stuffs and things we do. We use a legacy supplement to make sure they have the vitamins and minerals that they need to derive from the hay and create other nutrients that they can since domestic horses are not like the wild ones and even some of the semi-feral ones they don't have the same nutrition deriving ability that they did before you know, domestication so the legacy supplement fills that gap so they can be creating like amino acids and you know things that they need breaking down foods you know like we need to have vitamins too guys probably these horses are better taken care of in their diet than I take care of myself in my diet so Hooves need to be trimmed again. Fisher will be having his first trim. Spirit's coming back from being trimmed like twice a year for five years, so her hoof shape is changing and her pedal bone's starting to come back to more of a ground parallel scenario. But good hoof growth comes from good diet and walking around, right? You have to move around when you're a horse. Horses express themselves by moving their feet. They are maneuvering leaders. You know, if you get maneuvered by a horse, who's the leader, right? If you maneuver the horse, well, who's the leader, right? So we're going to be doing a lot of desensitization training with Fisher where he's getting led around and is not the leader because he'll be a yearling in March and he's a cult and I've broken my arm and I haven't been able to do much more than very basic ground roll with him. So he's going to be so excited to see the world that uh, i got to make sure my arm's pretty healed before we do that. Round pen. My fairy godmother, can I have a round pen? Anyway, look around here at the side a little bit where these guys are. They have a beautiful river. There's a clouder of cats that live here. The girls are fixed. We have Willow who visits often. It's neighbor dogs too, Sophie and Hunter. In the clouder we have Dugan. Dugan is stepdad, 16 month old, and Maggie. She's the mom. And then we have Pinky Whalen and Chewbacca and Bridgie, or Bridget, Bridgie. Bridgie Whalen, Pinky Whalen, and Chewbacca, Mr. Chu. And so these guys have lots of visitation from the cats and the dogs. and They don't know what the sound of the snowmobile is and Spirit spends lots of time looking. The point is, is that they're healthy and focused, relaxed, good diet, need I stress, good diet. No stomach acid building up and creating ulcers in these guys. All right. So, locking up the shed. We're going to lock Phil in there tonight. All right, guys, it's been a long video, but it's important to talk about, you know, that nutrition for your horse is not just what you're feeding him. It's his ability to maneuver his body and utilize those nutrients in a better way, you know. Did you know that our pets in North America and Europe are getting obese right along next to their people and they're eating these chemicals? Do you feed your horse bread? Do you know what's in people bread? Yeah not good, right? It's not good. Anyway, we'll put an end to the video from around the front here. Beautiful river design, if I do say so myself. And there's the baby and the mom. You guys are precious, precious, precious pieces of our living heritage. I love you. you get a bigger area soon. Yes, you will. And a burn. You're going to go inside and eat and be separated from your mom. She doesn't really get a chance to get your food from you, but we don't really want you getting food aggressive. Well, in the wild, you'd need to, right? You would need to at some point, but you're not in the wild, so we'll come as close as we can for you. All right, so maybe we end the video with a hi there from me. And uh, I don't know, what's a beautiful way to end this video? How about we just, we just jerk it out.